why don't we switch to a different topic? Um, one of the points that you brought up okay. in your book was actually about Bitcoin mining. And so tell me, tell me one of your concerns about Bitcoin mining. Um, I didn't go into it deeply in the book at the time, but I've gone into it since then on, in the blog post. There was yes. a popular post I made about um, Bitcoin mining and its stupendous power wastage and why it's good, actually, which was a list of people's reasons why it's good. Mm -hmm. I think it's bad. Um, I mean, Bitcoin mining is literally waste. The process it works is literally wasting money to print lottery tickets to win the Bitcoins. Um, this is proof of work mining. Right. You print 14 sextillion lottery tickets in 10 mi minutes and one with one winner. Mm -hmm. um, this, it's literally proof of waste. Um, I have seen papers where people argue that it literally has to be waste. It can't be anything useful. Mm -hmm. It has to be something that's wasted. It's proof of commitment. The trouble with this is, well, this is fine when Bitcoin is a tiny experiment. What if we got popular? What would happen with time? And they flagged this quite early as they would have to think about um, things like um, the waste of electricity and carbon generation and so on. And we're now at Bitcoin itself using 0.1% of all electricity in the world and quite a lot of that in, um, is coal-fired and this is enough to be a bit of a problem because it's the size of a country. The trouble with this is that there's no upper limit. There's no point at which people say enough because if there were, they would have said it already. Mm -hmm. um, it could just grow forever. And Bitcoin is anti-efficient. The more popular it gets, the more, um, or the more the price goes up rather than popularity as such. The, um, that's the number I'm talking about. As the price goes up, the incentive to mine to a certain level goes up and it'll just use more and more. There's no upper limit. Um, so it's anti-efficient because you're still getting the same seven transactions a second, theoretical, out of it. And you'll get a bit more with SegWit or whatever. But um, yeah, so... It, there's no sort of upper limit on how much it can, be, it can waste on proof. Proof of work mining is bad. It was like a quick hack to achieve what Satoshi wanted to achieve, which was decentralization. But decentralization had failed by about 2013, 2014. Um, by then we had three miners, uh, three big mining pools controlling most of it. And uh, Ghash went over 51% in 2014. Right. They promptly broke up Ghash because um, they didn't want to scare people. Um, you know, they actually well, liked happened, having a Bitcoin. G, what happened with Ghash was like the community like raised hell and fire telling everyone yeah. that, oh, shoot, like we're hitting 51%. And because it's a pool, like people were able to switch the miners to other places. Yeah. And but like, I, I hear your point. I hear your point about, um, hmm. okay, first, let's, okay, there's two topics. There's um, wasteful mining and then there's um, uh, how centralized maybe Bitcoin might be. And so I'll, I'll give you that. Um, even my myself and there are other peoples in the community that are concerned about how centralized Bitcoin might be in terms of oh, yeah. um, its mining. Bitmain, Bitmain is basically a monopolist in Bitcoin mining. <laughs> they like like 80% of the chips they make for any given proof of work currency. Right. I think, well, okay, just because you manufacture the chips doesn't mean you actually control the hash rate though, right? Those are, those are two separate. Oh, yeah. Uh, but they it gives you a huge, huge advantage in your own mining, and it may not control not one but two pools, for example. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and so that that is a, a great concern. Uh, but the mm. cool thing is that we have people like uh, Matt Corallo. He's um, putting forth uh, mining initiatives where uh, it's in the format of a mining pool, but like instead of the the administrator, the pool administrator. Um, filling the box blocks with the transactions and submitting it. It's actually um, the people itself inside the pool can create their own blocks and submit it. And therefore it, it opens the door up mm. that in the context of a pool mining, that it'll be more decentralized. And so even, even though it is a concern, um, there are things that we feel like we can do to try to uh, make it more decentralized. Yeah. I mean, it's an uphill battle because most things have economies of scale and proof of work mining is no exception. Basically, the bigger you are, the more efficient you are. And this leads to large mining pools and huge, huge buildings in rural China using the output of a dam or whatever. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. It's basically just the bigger you are, the more efficient you are. Right. Um, yeah, it's so I actually think that if Ethereum can get their proof of stake to work, which is highly debatable, they, they know they have to do new computer science to make this work. Um, but if their Casper initiative goes anywhere, and they are working very hard and sincerely on it, but I wouldn't put a date on it and they would be exceedingly foolish to put a date on it, then I think that that will help Ethereum market themselves as a much better idea for crypto because, you know, we're not so wasteful as that terrible Bitcoin and Litecoin people. And, um, you know... Right. So let's talk about wasting. Like, I mean, if we consider um, the amount of energy or the resources spent to mine for gold, which is a lot more destructive to the environment, um, I think comparatively, Bitcoin mining is actually pretty good, especially because mining companies are looking to be more energy efficient because they want to save money, but also eco-friendly. I think um, the mining company, uh, Bitfury, they look to be, you know, they look to go specifically in cold region places and um, use hydro plants to operate their mining facilities. Like, I just don't, okay. The reason, the purpose behind proof of work is that you're providing proof, you're providing energy, and all of that is being, you're doing all of that to secure the blockchain. You can only value an asset if it's like hard to get. And so the higher the difficulty is, the more valuable the asset becomes, right? And so if it's if it's too easy to uh, print or to produce blocks or anything like that, then um, it's just not as valuable. It, it The energy that is used to expend to secure Bitcoin's blockchain or Litecoin's blockchain um, it's 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 evidence of how valuable that asset is. Um, if instead of using up burning a certain amount of carbon, we burnt down houses or something, um, you might say, but we prove how valuable our coin is because we're burning down all these houses. And this has externality. People say, you're burning down houses. Uh, it's, um, it's using up enough energy that it's got externalities that are actually everyone else's business at this point. I mean... To a certain extent, you can say, right, it's our electricity, we can waste it how we like. But once it gets to a certain amount, then the rest of the world will say, yeah, actually, that's going to be a bit of a problem. Um, you also have to think about what you get out of this. Um, point, uh, an entire country's worth of electricity for seven transactions a second in a system that is, like, not really very decentralised, it's really obviously quite wasteful. And... This, yes, but it's worth it because we spent electricity on it, is a bit of a post-facto justification. It, it's coming up with an excuse after the fact for something because a given system works in a given way. I don't find it a convincing argument. Like, I don't value... No one values bitcoins because... No one thinks, I value this bitcoin because it had this much electricity put into it. They value it because they can get $7,000 for it. Right. It's not... That's not... Okay, maybe I expressed myself incorrectly, but the fact that people are willing to expend that much energy and work that hard to receive Bitcoins is evidence of how much people are valuing the asset. Um, um, but, but also to kind of like address like what you were saying about like its inefficiency. Yes, I agree that the layer one solution is absolutely an inefficient, um, seven to nine transactions per second. But uh, with layer two, we are we open that door up to scalability through the Lightning Network. And so even though people are securing the layer one, we can um, use layer two to just exponentially increase the number of transactions people can do within a second. 